hot-blooded church. My goodness. Well, that was a song I just want to celebrate by Rare Earth. I know I'll get a, con a copyright and probably on the YouTube thing, but I saw Rare Earth actually in concert in San Diego probably in late 1972. I'd just gotten out of boot camp, and I've always been one of my favorite rock and roll groups. Obviously, with YouTube today, you can go on and see all kinds of other songs. Hey, Big Brother is one of one of their Get Ready, uh, various other songs uh, they do. But I was listening to on YouTube, and I come and I saw this song, and it says, you know, I just want to celebrate another day of living. I just want to celebrate another day of life. I put my faith in the people, but the people let me down. So I turned the other way. And I carry on anyhow. That's why I'm telling you, I just want to celebrate. Yeah, yeah. Another day of living. Yeah. Another day, I just want to celebrate another day of what? That's what all Christians should be doing. Celebrating another day in life with Christ. A born again Christian, being a born again Christian, a born again believer in Christ, is something worth celebrating. Amen? Amen. 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 How often do you celebrate that born again life in Christ? I don't as often as I should. Why? I let the world pull me down. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Holy celebration is something that God wanted the Israelites to do also. Exodus chapter 23 verses 14 through 16. Three times a year you shall celebrate a feast to me. You will you shall observe the Feast of Unleavened Bread. For seven days you are to eat unleavened bread, as I command you, at the appointed time of the month, a bill. For, for in it you came out of Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty-handed. You shall also observe the Feast of the Harvest of first fruits of your labors, from what you sow in the field, also the feast of the ingathering at the end of the year when you gather the fruit of your labors from the field. The feast of unleavened bread is the most popular. Passover. The feast of first fruits and I'm going to describe this the best way I can as a gardener. It's, you know, a relatively, I can grow stuff for the deer to eat up. <laughs> but the first fruits is like, you know, if you got a tomato plant and you see that first tomato plant, you see that first green one, then it starts turning a little red, and, you know, you start thinking about it and all that. It's like, you get that first tomato. That's what they did. They celebrated. So when something when something first bore fruit or something, they started to sell, they celebrated that. But that's just the beginning of the season. Then the feast of the in, in, in gathering was after the harvest was over, thanking God 
for a successful crop. So that's what those three feasts were for. They were to celebrate. You know, I can hear God saying to the people, I just want you to celebrate. God also wants people to celebrate the most holy day, the Sabbath. In Exodus 31, 16, the sons of Israel shall observe the Sabbath to celebrate the Sabbath throughout their generations as a perpetual covenant. The Jewish Sabbath is is observed from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. (laughs) Very strict rules of what can be done and what cannot be done. Uh, um, The very uh, the Hasidic Jews and others are, are. are very strict with it. They, I mean, I mean, you can't do much of anything. You might as well just go take a nap. You know, that's that's, that's essentially. You know, then and then it gets all into the work issue and all that. I've heard all kinds of stuff through the years. And I remember a guy in my Sunday school class years ago. We were talking about this working on Sunday, working on the Sabbath, and he said, "Yes." And he said, "We could do work as long as it didn't involve power to it. You know, if you had to cut a board, it better be with a handsaw or something like that. You couldn't fire, you couldn't do a, a, a pop cut. You know, you know, that's how people have tried to do, do things. You know, even Jesus was challenged for healing on the Sabbath. <laughs> you, know, you know, so there's some, you know, you got to think through all that. But anyway, the Jewish Sabbath is to be celebrated. For Christians, it's Sunday. Obviously. And I like to think we gather at church to celebrate. God is telling us, I just want you to celebrate. And that's what we should do. That's what we should do. Church should be a celebration of all things Christian. Salvation, resurrection, etc., etc., etc. Do you ever think about coming to church to celebrate? You know, this, as I was putting this together, it spoke to me because sometimes I don't. I don't think about it as a celebration. Shame on me for saying it like that, but it is a celebration. It is a celebration. We come to celebrate, like I said, all the resurrection, the salvation we have in Christ. We come to celebrate with each other. We celebrate birthdays. We celebrate new jobs. We celebrate this or that. We'll celebrate next Sunday with the youth and the scouts and and I don't know the word to use, but to encourage or dedicate two young men that are going toward Eagle or working on their Eagle. And we want to be behind them and celebrate with them when they do become Eagle Scouts. We should come into this place with the attitude of, I just want to celebrate. I just want to celebrate. I'm like everyone else. I come in and sometimes weighed down by the worries of the world. And celebration is the furthest thing from my mind. But you know what? It don't take but a couple of licks on the guitar, a couple of beats on the drum, or a couple of words of encouragement 
that I go from worries of the world pulling me down to a celebratory mood. That's right. The opposite. That happened to y'all sometimes? I just want to celebrate another day of living. I just want to celebrate another day of life. <laughs> Angela loves it. <laughs> She's going to say, oh, you sing so good. <laughs> One of the most important celebrations we do as Christians is communion. I've sliced and dashed communion about every which way I can think of. Having to look at what it is and through it, you know, the many sermons I've done here, and you know, what else? What else can be said about what else can I say about communion? It's a celebration. They were gathered together for the Passover meal. The, 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 the feast of unleavened bread. You know its roots, communion, is in the feast of unleavened bread. It goes all the way back. To Moses' time. We know it as, well, the Jews know it as Passover. We know it more commonly as the Last Supper. Let me read this scripture to you out of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Verses 7 and 8. Let me sort of set the context. Paul had to do a lot of correction to the Corinthian church. Uh, two long epistles, fairly lengthy. You know, he wrote to other places more than once, but this is fairly long. And part of their problem was, I think they got the celebration part correct, but they took the celebration part too far. I mean, you can go in and read what Paul corrects them about and, and what have you. So he had to do a lot of, you know, this is what you should do. It is a celebration, but... It's a godly, holy celebration. It's not a pagan celebration. Essentially is what he's telling us. Let's pick this up in chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. Clean out the old leaven that you may be a new lump. Just as you are, in fact, unleavened. For Christ, our Passover, also has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the feast, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the leaven bread of sincerity and truth. It's a challenge to understand what Paul's saying in that. You have to break out the Bible dictionary, the Greek, Hebrew, study Bible. But the key to understanding it is leaven. So let me see if I can explain what I understand. Leaven is sourdough with a bacteria called lactobacillia. It was held back when they would make bread. They would hold back a portion of the dough 
and let it ferment. There's fermentation in there. They would carry that around. So when they got ready to make some more bread, they would mix that in. See, it essentially leaven, the sourdough, that with that lactobacillia, took the place of yeast that you can buy nowadays. You know, they just didn't go to the store and get baker's yeast. That, that was what was, I didn't know, I knew it had to do with yeast to make, you know, yeast makes dough rise, makes cakes fluffy and all that. And, and, and God told them before the Exodus, don't use any leaven. You got to get used to eating this unleavened bread because you're going to leave in a hurry. So what does Paul, when they, well, let me say this too. When, they, when you hear leaven in the Old Testament, it is literal, general. In the New Testament, when the, the word leaven is used, it's generally metaphorically or symbolically. Paul's, I think, telling us, like I said, this is not easy to interpret. Get rid of the old leaven in you. Don't keep carrying around that old lump of sourdough. Get rid of it. I love sourdough bread. You know, I love it. Publix makes the best sourdough bread. But you better eat it quick because it's not all our preservatives in it. But I, I just, man, it's just something about it. I'll get way off. Get rid of the old leaven. Don't be carrying it around anymore. Start fresh. Without anger. And celebrate the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. That is why we can say one, two, three, four. I just want to celebrate no. Christ in communion. <laughs> Amen. 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 